Consultation. We have had no notification of any person coming along to speak at the meeting. And agenda item six is the audit findings of the Federal Borough Council year ending uh, report from uh, yourself, I think. Frank. Yes, it is. And, and Scarlett, well, I'll start. Um, Scarlett, and, and this so, is the, um, well, the, amended the amended version. The amended version, yes. Yeah, I think the amended version is in the Big, it is, yeah, it's in the big, big paper, so rather than the, uh, the small one. Um, yes, yeah, so, so thank you, Chair. Um, this is our audit finance report, the audit of the Council's financial statements um, for the year. Uh, and as I'm sure as members are aware, in terms of the work we have to undertake, we have to give probably two primary opinions opinion on the financial statements, and then there's the value for money conclusion that the, uh, the Council has adequate arrangements in place during the year uh, in terms of its use of resources. So in terms of our audit findings report, we have now substantially completed all of our audit work and the reason for the update was, um, if you have read between the two, and I'll, I will explain a little, bit, um, a little bit later, is around looking at the pension liability that was disclosed in the Council's account. So, um, I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. So what, what, the only bits of our audit that are actually outstanding now are that we looking at the management letter of representation, which we will be asked to look at and approve tonight. Um, and then we have to actually undertake our post balance sheet eventually up to the date of signing the opinion. And as the, account, as the accounts will go on to be approved by council, that will be sometime next week. Um, and we have to complete our work on the whole of government accounts, although that should be relatively straightforward for the council, because I think you'll be under the threshold. Yeah. So, um, that really is just a numbers exercise of adding up and sending off the form. So that should hopefully be completed in the next week as well. So if I take you to um, page six, uh, where we're headed up the, the key audit and financial reporting issues. As I said, we received the draft accounts uh, and working papers at the commencement of our work, and that was an agreement with the council. Um, We've not identified it, any adjustment affecting the council's reported financial position. So that's your bottom line, and that's the, the figure that goes into your, your general fund and impacting upon um, council tax. We did recommend a number of minor disclosure changes, and I think that's not unusual. Um, you know, the accounts are quite a complex document when putting it together. Um, it's not unusual to see some of the presentation uh, and, and typical errors come in. Um, so we've recommended a number of disclosure changes, small number of disclosure changes to management to help improve that uh, and presentation. Um, and any details of those are recorded later on in the report. There are no unadjusted misstatements to report to you, but I think what we 
what we do have to report to you is one material adjustment that we need to bring to your attention. And I think it's important actually, which maybe not come through this report, that this isn't something that um, we were unaware of as auditors. We've had an ongoing dialogue with the council around this item in the account. Um, and certainly when the draft accounts were put together, I did have a discussion with Craig about what was the best um, way of presenting it because there was uncertainty around the figure at the year end. Um, and this is in relation respectively to the ongoing, um, I suppose, bringing a resolution to the issues around the Leisure Trust and its pension liability. That was a contingent liability in your accounts mm -hmm. last year where the council was in dispute with the trust over whether it's, whether it was a, a sponsor stroke. Uh, back out of the trust in terms of the pension liability. There have been ongoing discussions between the council, the trust, and the pension fund. I'm happy for, for Simone and Craig to, to make sure I get this right. Uh, and in January of this year, there was a legal agreement signed by um, the parties involved that effectively would transfer the liabilities of those employees, or those employees effectively would come back into the council's pension fund. However, within that legal document, there, are a couple, there was one clause around it wouldn't be triggered until the cash payments, two cash payments were received mm -hmm. by the trust, and that was to ensure um, that the, when the council did bring the staff back into its balance sheet, um, that the, the figure on that the actuary had certified as being either surplus or deficit on that net liability was as, as outlined in the, in the legal agreement. On that basis, the Pension funds actually had calculated pension liability, in expecting that legal agreement to, uh, to cash to have been received before the year end and therefore being forced. And therefore, the IS 19 figures you put in your financial statement at the time did include those staff. It's now subsequently um, been determined um, by the council and you know, the pension funds that the, the cash payment didn't actually come in until May. So that meant the legal agreement wasn't enforced at the balance sheet date. Therefore, quite appropriately, you've decided to amend your accounts to reflect that. And I think it's important to say we've been in discussions around that and we are comfortable that is the appropriate thing to do because the accounts are at the balance sheet date and as of March, that legal agreement was not in force. Therefore, there has been an adjustment to the pension fund net liability within the council's accounts of 3.548 million on the liability, reducing it this year for your perspective. Um, and that, there's no effect in a way on the council tax because it then just affects the pension fund reserve because all you're required to do by statute is charge whatever charge for the pension fund is whatever retirement benefits have to be paid out or contributions. There's a statutory override of what you pay and that's to reflect on the way local government works. So that adjustment has gone through the financial statements you have in front of you tonight. We have audited it, we've checked it after its work and we're comfortable that that is the appropriate position. Clearly what will happen uh, in 17-18 is once the, the final figures have been worked out by the actuary and I think there's all going discussions between the council and the pension fund and the absolute figures, then they'll be reflected in the 17-18 accounts. So that's the main change that we need to bring to your attention um, in terms of that, uh, in terms of our work. In terms of other financial responsibilities, we look at the annual governance statement, we look at the narrative report, and there are no issues that we need to report to you for those, and there are no significant controls issues um, that we need to bring into your attention as well. In respect to value for money, um, I can come on to it a bit later. In terms of the risks we identified, we're satisfied <coughs> that we've been able to mitigate those risks through the work we've done, and on that basis we are proposing unqualified value for money conclusion. What I'm going to bring to your attention is around other statutory powers and duties. We have received two valid objections on the accounts, uh, and there's a three-stage process in terms of objections these days. There's one, are they valid, and otherwise have they been made in line with the Act? Do they meet the criteria for that? And if they are, we have to accept them as a, as a valid objection. Um, and in that sense, we've done that first test, and yes, they do meet the, 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 the criteria for being a valid objection, which is normally that they relate to money uh, items in the account of 1617 uh, and I have either been requested to, uh, to undertake a public interest report or suggest that there is not value for money in the use of resources or potentially that the, the, the council has acted unlawfully. So in stage one has, the hurdle has been, been overcome. There is then a second stage that we look at uh, in terms of determining whether we need to take any work in relation to them and, there's a, and if they criteria and if they're vexatious, i.e. they've been raised before um, and they've, or they've already been looked at or I consider maybe the public interest 
that you know, the cost of investigating isn't commensurate necessarily with the, the issues raised, then uh, we can determine not to take it forward. We're still in the process in that process at the moment in stage two. And once we've, we've determined that, then I will inform both the council and as well as the objector on which way we would require to go. If we're required to do work, then we go to stage three where we would undertake work. And we're quite conscious of that because it's not covered by a normal audit fee, that work. It will be additional cost to the council. So that is part of the factor when we're looking around public interest uh, and undertaking that work. So that's where we are. We're satisfied that any, the objections as they have been raised do not have a material impact on the financial statement. So they do not affect our opinion in that sense and they do not affect our value for money conclusion. We will therefore issue our opinion. What we, what we cannot do is therefore certify the audit closed. And normally a certification of audit closure means that you can't ask any further questions in relation to that set of accounts. Um, it's a little bit archaic now actually because it's slightly tweaked the way the Act works now as well because you only have 30 days. So, um, but formally I cannot certify the audit closed. When you look at our audit opinion, it'll say we are just unable to we concluded our work but we can't certify it closed. Can we be told what the objections are? Um, I think if we, well, we normally try and keep the confidentiality um, involved to the objector, so we, we try not to breach that, um, that um, impartiality and we try and do not to release that, but so if we're in closed session, in open session, I can't comment upon it. I mean, it's, it's relation to expenditure on one item um, around uh, the, the, the council purchase. Yeah, so we try. I mean, think about it. We do try to keep it um, anonymous. So we will let you know once we've completed our work, uh, what those, what the issues are, and then take you through that as when we've completed our work. Um, in terms of grant certification, um, <coughs> just to inform you, the only work we've undertaken is housing benefit claim, uh, in that sense, and later our audit uh, and work all capital receipts as well. And you'll find in there that we disclose that um, we were independent. So overall, we're proposing unqualified opinion on financial statements and unqualified value for money conclusion. So that's the overall part of our work. Um, in terms of the detailed um, work, I'll, I'll very quickly go through the, the report on page nine. Uh, in terms of materiality, it was still 1.5 million. Um, and we didn't make any changes to that on the receipt of the financial statements. And what it does lead to is there's a figure above which we have to report to you issues that triviality. So we do report to you items over £77,000. No change to the materialities and disclosures of remuneration and uh, related party transactions. In terms of significant risks, um, we, we rebut the revenue one, uh, the revenue income, the revenue, presumed revenue um, significant risk of recognition of revenue, and that's primarily because we know where you get your money from. Um, you get it from council tax and you get it from government grants. There is a degree of fees and charges, um, but we're satisfied that it can't be a material um, misstatement in relation to that income. In terms of override of controls, we have to assume that management will will look to override controls. I always say it doesn't mean that they are, they, they are trying to, or they will. Uh, and we primarily address that through work of journals, and we have no issue issues that we need to bring to your attention around that work. The two other significant risks we did identify were in relation to the valuation of the pension fund net liability. Um, and again, the primary uh, reporting issue there is what I've just gone through already, which is around those in relation to the trust. I can confirm that what we have done is satisfied ourselves around the information you provided to the actuary. And then what we've also done is, is um, there's an independent review of the actuary's assumptions. So we marry up the information you provide the actuary is accurate, We've looked at the assumption of the actuary as taken and they are within our expected ranges and therefore when they produce the debt liability figure it's also we're satisfied it's not materially misstated. Um, the other one that we looked at was in relation to the presentation of financial statements and the telling the story and a narrative report uh, and bringing in the, the new EFA statement uh, and the position of the expenditure and funding analysis statement before the primary statements. It's not a primary statement, we just ask it makes clear it was a note to the accounts and if necessary we would have, so that's what really done. we've just done that. Um, so the wording of repealing will reflect that it's clearly a note to the accounts and not a primary statement. Again, it's, it's really where, just so a reader understands what we've audited and not audited. Um, and then the other risks we looked at were employee remuneration, operating expenditure, as, as we've not identified any issue there to bring to your attention. If I now skip on to pages 14 and 15, 
These are elements we look at in terms of accounting policies, estimates and judgments. As no issues around your policies and revenue recognition. Um, and in terms of judgments, and we've given an amber to judgments and estimates. Um, <coughs> and that was around evaluation methodology that the, the council was using, um, where you haven't you haven't complied with the requirements for the class of assets to be valued to be shown separately within notes to the accounts. This was an issue that came up last year as well. In the years, so and it is, and it is a, an item, an area, an issue which you are willing to, to live with as a council. Um, but as auditors, we have to bring that to your attention, um, and we, we continue to do so. Um, and therefore, we rate it as amber. Again, I don't think it would mislead a, a user of the accounts, but it's not fully code compliant, so we do have to report it to you. No issues around going concern or other accounting policies. Um, and in, in terms of looking at page 16 and other communication requirements, um, just confirmation there that we were requesting a letter of representation and it will be a standard one. There won't be any um, issues in that that we will need to really especially highlight. No internal controls. Um, and on page 18 is the detail of the adjusted misstatement. Um, I won't go into any further because I think I'd love to do that uh, as part of the introduction. And just confirming the figure of 3.548 million. Um, other misclassification disclosure changes, just to bring to your attention, as I say, any over 77,000 we need to talk to you about. Um, one is around the debtors. Um, the council has show, decided to show that as net, net or the bad debt provision that is fully in line with the code. It was just a change this year, and it wasn't quite clear this year and last year, so in all reading it might have gone, what's, what's happening? So um, that's just been amended to, there was no wrong with the figures, it was just to help people in their reading their accounts. Um, and finally on the housing support grant, there was an element in there, was incorrectly stated at 811,000 in note 32, and it should have stated 294,000. So again, it's not a, a big issue, uh, and management have made those amendments. So that's really the financial statements. And briefly on value for money, if we look at the risk we identified were around <coughs> future savings plans, we've undertaken work um, to satisfy ourselves around the financials, medium term financial planning and performance. <coughs> and you are committed to clearly to identifying those savings. We are fully aware that we need the age of austerity um, and councils are under increasing scrutiny and increasing challenge to be more efficient and more effective. Um, but we're satisfied that you undertake your un arrangements in place will ensure that you will have a balanced financial position uh, going forward into the medium term. Um, and on that basis, we are satisfied that the risk has been mitigated and therefore that you have proper arrangements in place. Um, I would propose therefore to stop there. Um, as I say, we do re record our audit fees, um, both for the grant claims and the full capital receipts a bit later on. But I'll thank you therefore to take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Sure, I've got, I've got one. Um, on the misclassifications, uh, that housing related support grant you say is not a big issue, but I'm reading 811,000 down to 294. That's half a million quid. I would say that's a big issue. Yeah. That was, it doesn't affect any of the numbers within the, the main statements. It's a note which is, supports the CIES and the balance sheet. Um, the reason it was misstated was, and I'll hold my hands up, it was my error. I was looking at transactions and I looked in the wrong financial year and just picked up those particular oh, transactions. So it didn't change any of the numbers in the actual accounts. It was literally just a note to say these figures are included within the comprehensive income and expenditure statements. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's the previous year's grant figure, isn't yeah. it? It's close to that one, yeah. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, maybe we should send Councillor Condic on a get well card, because he's obviously not well if he's not here this evening. Uh, but that being said, I'm glossed over, hopefully. Um, can I go to, it talks in here about, uh, well, it depends what page number we're on, but yeah. somewhere it talks about due to public interest in these disclosures. Now, is that particular public interest, and does this relate to maybe the objections that I've put in, or is it just the general phrase that obviously the public are or should be interested in this? I'm just curious. It's actually on page nine of our main report. I don't know what page you've done. Yeah, sorry, okay. 
Um, yeah, so that's in relation to materiality. Um, yeah, so and, and, and what we do is, as I say, our headline materiality for the overall audit is one and a half million. But we, yes, I mean, it's uh, in terms of we think people would be interested to know what relationships, nothing to do with council that has been named, um, in that sense, it's to do with we think people will look at your accounts, look at related parties, who, do you, who are you having contracts with, and are you disclosing all of those? And probably, you know, for thinking, I know you have contracts with these people, why aren't they in there? So we set a lower materiality re uh, threshold for that because we think it's a, well, we would say a sensitive item. It doesn't mean there's an issue, we've done this um, yeah. consistently across all our council. So really, it's nothing to do with the individual's concern, it's just we think people will look at your account. The usual phrase, it's in general. the public. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Anyone else have any further questions they want to ask of the Okay. Um, is that the end of your? Uh, That's the end of your presentation. Uh, in terms, of, I think um, I said there was a letter of representation that I think you will be asked to approve as a, as a committee. As I say, as a standard letter of representation, um, and then as I say, once we receive that, um, and then we once it, full council has approved the accounts. I don't know. You've got the accounts to come on into now. Um, I'm sure we're trying to help. If we are, I'll answer any questions. But no, that's that's the other one. Okay. Are you okay with that, Sir Craig? Yep. No? Okay. Right. Then, <coughs> thank you for that and, and for your presentation. Yeah. We then move to um, agenda item seven. Thank you very much, Chair. The, um, the covering towards report... The, before we start, towards the end of the paperwork, we have it from the Yeah, the last two pages of your small pack was the, the covering report. Um, which, to be fair, is just a, an introduction to say you're going to be getting the statement of accounts. Um, there's no numbers in there. It's The only things worth pointing out are changes to what, how we've reported the accounts previously. Um, Grant Patterson made reference to the EFA, the Expenditure and Funding Analysis, which was a new requirement for this year, um, and is a note to the accounts, and just shows some linkage between how we report internally on a portfolio basis and how everything gets funded. We've also changed the reporting in the Comprehensive Income and Expenditure Statement, which is a change as part of the Telling the Story agenda that came out. Um, previously, we reported on something called CERCOP, which had fixed headings for every single council to report on. Um, the change has now gone to how we report internally. So because we report on a portfolio basis, that's how our statement of accounts has been put together. But all other councils, depending on how they report, will do similar things. So the actual statement of accounts has updated following the changes from the, the pension liability and the recommendations that have come from uh, Grant Thornton. They were sent out to you a few days ago in the big pack that has been submitted. There is, you've had the, the draft accounts previously, which hopefully you have had opportunity to go through. There's no major changes, but if there's any questions that anybody wants to ask, then feel free. As a committee, you are asked to make recommendation to council that these accounts get approved, and that will be next Wednesday. But you, as councillors of this committee, need to be comfortable that you're comfortable with making that recommendation to the council. Okay, thank you. Great. Anyone have any points they want to raise on agenda item seven? In that case, then, can I uh, that the recommendation at two is that the statement of accounts for 2016-17 be recommended to council for approval. Is that agreed? Yeah. And at the same time, to thank Grant Thornton for Absolutely. their efficient yeah. way in which they've carried out the, uh, the audit. Okay, yeah. thank you. I've got a letter of representation here as well, which Grant referred to earlier, and June 9 will sign on behalf of the committee, and we'll have that more than one minute that we've done that as well. Okay. Right, I haven't had any notification. Um, this must be a record, I think. Uh, item eight on the agenda is, are there any other items any member wants to bring to our attention? 
No. Okay. Thank you all for your attendance and safe journey. <laughs> <laughs> when we've got a tone like this in front of us as well. <laughs>